Hey guys, what's up? Long time, no see. Let me figure out how to get this chair down. I feel like I'm towering over everybody. All these levers and knobs and buttons and, oh, ooh. How y'all doing? It is Monday. It's been a long day for me. I've been up since 4.15 in the morning. I am in Nashville, so I actually got up at 3.15 Nashville time. I'm gonna take off this tacky looking Fitbit. I ain't getting no steps in today anyways. So, I wanted to take some time out of my day and week of studying and doing life to explain where I have been. I have been getting so many messages from you guys on my Instagram, on LinkedIn, on YouTube comments and email about where the heck I've been. And I feel like I've not been absent for too long. But I guess you guys mean work life, study life, and not my travel vlogs. And really, I have been kind of absent on YouTube. So I apologize. Thanks for hanging with me in my absence, <laughs> I suppose. Let me just say that March was literally the busiest month of my entire life. Literally, March 2019 will go down in history as the most busy I have ever been. And that includes all four years of college when I thought I was busy, but yet I still had time to take a nap every single day. Not sure why I thought I was so busy. The first weekend of March, I was in New York City for my birthday. Amazing trip. It snowed. It was awesome. It did take me a little while to recover after that trip. The weekend after that, my friend had a baby shower, which wasn't that big of a deal as far as time consuming, but I had, or I didn't have to, but I chose to make this big, fancy, elaborate diaper cake. That took hours on end to make that diaper cake, and then I got her a bunch of stuff for her baby. So that was fine and dandy. Um, I was starting to study for FAR during this time, so after my New York trip, I picked up FAR, and we'll get to that in a minute. It's a struggle. So then the third weekend of March, um, I had a wedding to go to in Atlanta. Actually, it was further than Atlanta. It's actually northeast of Atlanta, but we had to go down to the city and then up. That's the way the GPS took us. We thought this wedding was around Chattanooga area, like North Georgia. It was an extra four hours. <laughs> so we looked the day of. So like I'm just chilling in my apartment, like waiting for Matthew to call or whatever to see like what time he wants to leave. And he's like, holy crap, heaven, like this is such a far drive. So anyways, we ended up driving all over Georgia and back. That was a 13 hour day for like a three hour wedding. Just kidding, I was, that's wrong proportions, but it was a very long day. Then the weekend after that was my sister's baby shower, which was so much fun. I got to plan it, I was in charge of the whole thing. I've never been in charge of anything, never organized any sort of party, and it was just so great. Like, I loved it. It did stress me out to no end. Like, I was pulling my hair out and cried a few times over the stress that I was putting on myself to make sure this was a perfect party, but there's no one to blame but myself. Like, I don't even think my sister had much expectation for what it was gonna turn out to be. Um, so hopefully she enjoyed it. I think it went really well. Um, and then that Sunday was my grandpa's service. As you guys know, he passed away in late February. Um, so that was just a big day with family and lots of emotions that day. So that was a very exhausting weekend. And then that following like Tuesday and Wednesday was when I went up, I went to Cincinnati on Tuesday to fly out to Los Angeles on Wednesday. Wednesday through Sunday. Amazing trip. Probably my second favorite trip I have ever taken. Mostly because, probably because one, we planned it ourselves as adults. And two, it was so foreign to me. Like California is so different than Tennessee in so many ways. So it reminded me a lot of my Italy and Spain trip, like literally an international foreign trip. Um, so it just gave me like this high of being somewhere completely foreign, even though it's literally in the US. <laughs> like so many people live in California and it's just so crazy different than Tennessee. Amazing trip, so that was awesome. But after that LA trip, y'all, I crashed hard. Like, work after that trip was so hard to like, normally I work 10 hour days. I couldn't get through like a seven hour day. Like, I was struggling so hard. And every day after work, I went home and went straight to bed. Like 6 p.m. asleep every day after that trip. So then this past weekend, it might have been two weekends ago, um, I rested up really well. And then I just last week started getting really serious and intense with FAR. So that was a lot of talking and I feel out of breath and my mouth's getting a little dry. I don't have any water. <laughs> it was a very intense month. Also, I am, so you guys know Chancey, like my best friend, the one I went to New York City with. Um, we call each other twins because we have the same birthday. We've literally been friends since like for years and years and years. So we don't know where to go for our next trip. So I kind of was joking with him saying, what if I planned a trip and didn't tell you anything about it? And it was like a surprise. And he was totally down for it. Like I was not expecting that because that's a huge deal. Like he's having to give me money to pay for this trip that he has no idea where he's going. So he's down for that. So I have already booked this trip. I am super, super excited. I will not be telling you guys where it is. I haven't told, but maybe like four or five people. 
So it's in August, which is the furthest out of a trip I have ever planned. I'm normally very last minute. Um, but since this is a complete surprise, I want to make sure it goes really well. And I want to make sure or hope and pray, fingers crossed, that I'm done with the CPA by this trip. So it's like the second week of August, first, second, third week, sometime in August, right before busy season starts. So hopefully I'm done with the CPA by then. So I'm super pumped about that trip. He has no idea. The only hints I have given him are one, he's gonna need his passport. I had to tell him that to make sure it's like valid and not about to expire. So he's gonna need his passport. And two, I like wrote this super tacky, like really quick riddle at like 2 a.m. to give him a hint for number two about semi of a direction where it's going. And I think it went, it was like a surprise trip. Oh, what fun. At least where you're going is north of the sun. <laughs> So, so embarrassing, so tacky. Basically what I was trying to get a hint at was that it's north of the equator. So that takes off half the world. So it's, we're not going down here, we're going up here. So that's only two hints he knows. I am so thrilled about this trip. Also, last week, and you, one of you guys actually commented on one of my videos the day before I had my dermatologist appointment about my little wart collection that you guys saw on my planner video. So it turns out it's not warts. Congrats, super excited. I didn't know what to call it, so whatever. I literally basically like had this appointment. This doctor comes, looks at it, she feels at it, she measures it, she puts like a Sharpie mark on it. I don't really know why. I guess to do like a radius point or whatever. And it's called like granulora. Something like that. It's got two really long words. I was like, girl, can you write that down for me so I can take it home and look it up on Wikipedia? So she did. She wrote down in a piece of paper for me. Actually, I do have it. Time out. Granuloma annular. She had some fancy way to pronounce it, but I think I'm right. <laughs> Basically, it is caused by a virus. What? And it spreads all over your hand. And it may just stop there. It may go all over my hand. She doesn't know. She said it should go away on its own. Um, but that I can put some like steroid cream on it. So that's what I'm doing twice a day. It's still there. But I just had my appointment the other day. But he's probably like, what is this girl paying $35 for me to tell her it's nothing? Put some hydrocortisone on it. That's the gist of it. In case anyone was wondering about my hand. It's also semi-growing on my ankle. You guys probably can't tell, but this whole ankle here is red and like puffed out. I thought it was a complete separate skin condition, but she said it's related to this. I don't know. I talk so freaking fast. So far, as all so many of you guys have been asking how I'm handling far, and I think it's interesting. I think people are wanting to know how I'm handling it because we know how much of a struggle the other exams have been for me. <laughs> so people are like, how's heaven handling this? Because she struggled with those easy ones. Yeah, y'all, far sucks so bad. I really don't even want to talk about it. It puts a pit in my stomach. Like, I have never felt so much hatred and anger towards anything before, ever, more than this far exam. Like, I absolutely hate every single thing about it. It's like more than just like the other exams. I'm like, I felt like it was a big challenge and I wanted to overcome the challenge. Like, I was determined to get this challenge over with. This far exam, I don't even want the challenge. Like, throw me back over the mountain. I'm so over it. But it's bringing me more satisfaction with the idea, uh, with the decision to take far last. Because I know for a fact, if I was taking far first, I would have given up. There's absolutely no way I would go through with this. Literally no way in HE double hockey sticks because I cannot, like, I can't even express how hard this is for me. So that's basically how it's going. That sounded so miserable and not encouraging. Encouraging words I would give to anybody is if you want to be a CPA, give it everything you've got. Keep trying. Don't give up. I took audit four times. I didn't give up. But also, I think the difference with that exam was I enjoyed studying audit. I mean, I hate studying. Who likes studying? But I enjoyed the content. I don't give a flip about FAR. I do not care about IFRS accounting. I don't care about this freaking tax basis, cash basis, anything. Like, basic gap accrual is all I need for my job, at least right now. That's all I care about doing. The rest, I don't give a crap. So, that's my thoughts at the moment. I can't decide if there's a police station over here or if there's just like five cops surrounding this minivan. I, did the minivan visit the police station or did the police come to the minivan? I can't figure it out. I've been watching this whole time. People watching up here in the hotel room looking like a creep. The biggest struggle with FAR, honestly, is having to force myself to study, which has been a struggle with all the exams, but I am literally more busy than I was even taking BC, and I am so much like... 
I'm very thankful I've made several friends here in Knoxville, but like, I can't say no to hanging out. It's not in my blood. I physically cannot say no. I never have. I never did in college and I made it out okay. But this is a whole lot harder than college. So like, I have to say no to hanging out. Like literally Saturday, I was like, okay, I'm gonna study all day Saturday, 10 hour day. My friend texts me and is like, do you wanna go kayaking? Text her back in 30 seconds. Absolutely, what time? And we go kayaking. <laughs> you guys, did not even think twice. Granted, I did get a lot of studying in and I was super diligent that weekend, so that was great. And then Sunday, yesterday, I studied really well, so proud of myself. We also had family game night. So as long as I'm studying well, I can balance it with social stuff. I just can't be lazy and take naps and watch movies, which I have not done since I've been studying far. I literally have not done any of those things. I've literally either been studying, socializing, or sleeping, or working. That's the four categories of my life at the moment. So I'm sure some of you guys can relate out there for you studying for the CBA exam. Also with FAR specifically, the amount of brain cells it takes to line up in a perfect row and study for this exam is unreal. Like every other exam, I work a 10 hour day, I come home, I eat something because you need food to survive. And then I just start studying. And I'm kind of like probably 80% focused, 20% distracted and tired and whatever. But I do okay in the evenings. With FAR, if you're not 100% focused and literally reciting everything in your head like three times, then you're not gonna understand it. Like you can't zone out for two seconds because you lost like a whole minute of content. It's so annoying how much brain power you have to use. And it's so draining, it's exhausting. Like so exhausting so I get home from work and I study about two or three hours a night every week night now I'm working five day weeks um, shorter days so I'm not working ten I'm working seven and a half hour days eight and a half nine give or take whatever the day brings and then I go home and I study about two or three hours and it's working well for me um, I can only speak for like the last week when I've been seriously focused and everything but I have probably cried every single day not gonna lie like not even on my period either just I can't wait till that week comes. That'll be a whole freaking drowning session. It's just so bad. I feel like I'm gonna look back at this video and be like, girl, what were you going through? Cause that exam is not that hard, but it is, it's ridiculous. Not encouraging to anybody I know. So if you guys are studying for the exam or about to study for the exam, ignore everything I just talked about and let me give you a positive message. <laughs> If you want to be a CPA, if that's what your career brings you to, if that's your lifelong dream, completely pursue it with everything you've got. I do believe everybody is capable of passing this exam. It's just gonna take a lot of sacrifice. I don't know how like dumb test takers like myself that have families or husbands, multiple or kids, or anything else, two jobs, or work, you know, 60 plus hours a week. I don't know how they get this exam out of the way. For me, it takes lots of prayer. I pray every single day about it multiple times. Like, Lord, get me through this far. Let me open my brain. Let me be patient with myself. Don't let me get discouraged. All of those things every day, because it takes so much. I've also been asked recently a few times why I'm even studying, trying to be a CPA if I work in government accounting. So if that is a question that you have, my answer for myself, I can only speak for myself in my position at this time in my life, is I don't know where I'll be in 10 years. I don't know where I'll be in five years. I don't know what my career is gonna bring me to be. Am I gonna stay in my position my entire career? I have no idea. So why would I limit myself and not get this certification that opens up all of these doors and opens up all of these opportunities and pay raises and more negotiation power? Why not do that if I have the opportunity to do so? And now since I'm single, living by myself, you know, living my best life, it's the best time to take this exam. So that was my mindset going into it, mostly just being preparing myself for the future. I don't know what it's gonna bring, so I wanna, you know, prepare well for it. For my job now, I do get a pay raise when I pass the CPA. They did somewhat um, pay for the exam study materials itself. Also, Becker no longer has an expiration. I don't know if that was sent out to every Becker candidate. I got an email saying, your materials are not gonna expire, so use them as long as you need. I was like, parades, because mine expire in June, and I'm still taking far, so that was awesome. Anyways, it is somewhat needed in my job, my current position right now, it's not, but if I wanted to in charge big audits here in the state, they some of them require the CPA license. Um, also, if I plan on being a manager in like 50 years down the road, <laughs> just kidding, not 50, but um, you have to have your CPA license for that. 
It also just makes you more credible as an auditor for the client and your auditee to know that you are, you did take the exam and you kind of know what you're talking about. Even if you don't, you kind of have the letters behind your name to kind of say you do. So that's the reasoning behind why I am trying to get the CPA out of the way. And thank goodness I've got three parts done and far as my last one because I am so over it. <laughs> like I've been studying this since January 2018. So what is that, like a year and four months? Yeah, so fun times. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, that was a lot of talking and chit-chatting, but that is where I'm at. So thanks for catching up with me. <laughs> and I will probably see you guys next time. I mean, I am doing... <laughs> keep talking over my words. I don't even know what I'm saying. Who am I anymore? I am doing a vlog this week here in Nashville for these two days and whatever else the rest of the week brings me. So tune into that later this week if you want to see what's happening. And thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. Y'all just realized this is literally the same exact outfit I was wearing in my last YouTube video there in Chattanooga. You guys are probably going to think I wear this every single day. I do. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>